celebrate their achievements. I know that Anne recognized them earlier at the uh, Marriott, but their achievements are really worth celebrating. They come from every corner of the globe, from Afghanistan to Nigeria, from Cambodia to Uruguay. And since completing the exchange program, they've helped women get breast cancer treatment in Kosovo, they've started a news radio program in Afghanistan, they stood up for LGBT youth in China, they've worked in civic education and environmental justice. One is the foreign affairs advisor to the president of the Czech Republic. They all contributed their experiences, and we congratulate one and all. Now, I was looking back and getting the statistics, and these are amazing. Nearly 200,000 people have participated in the International Visitors Leadership Program. Including more than 320 current and former heads of state and heads of government. And as secretary, I get to meet so many of them, and I'm always so proud when they say, oh, I was a visitor. Uh, and then they tell me their experience about where they went and where they lived and who they met. Um, for example, Brazil's new president, first woman president. And President Hamid Karzai of Afghanistan. So we have a, a very good relationship with people who know something about us and we know something about them. But I also meet visitors who uh, work beyond the uh, spotlight. Last month, for example, I was at a town hall in Yemen to talk about civil society and human rights. Yay, woman. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the alumni there was a young woman named Nakla. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's an activist who works in conflict resolution and peace building. And for her, uh, program, she had visited, uh, my God, North Dakota. <laughs> and she has returned several times since to talk to uh, students at about Islam and about the work of women mediators in resolving trauma disputes in Yemen. Now, I'm told that at Nadwa's first visit, she was on the road with a group of other international visitors when they got caught in a classic North Dakota hailstorm. <laughs> and at the time, they were passing through a small town called Max. Uh, maximum population, 287. <laughs> <laughs> so they pulled their hands over and knocked on the door of the nearest house. Now, it's not every day in North Dakota, or really anywhere in North Dakota, that you open your front door and you see a group of young people from Yemen, Uganda, Ecuador, and <laughs> One story, and there are hundreds and thousands of such stories, and it really illustrates why programs such as this is, are so important. By helping people engage in people to people diplomacy, they help us deepen the fundamental goal of American public diplomacy, which is to promote mutual understanding between Americans and the people of other nations. So I hope the National Council for the International a visitors program and the International Visitor Leadership Program continue for many, many more years to come. I will not be around on the uh, 140th anniversary, <laughs> the 100th anniversary, but uh, our successors in all walks of life, including here in the State Department, will. And hopefully, we will see the results of all of this dedicated effort. Greater understanding, a greater commitment to peace, an effort to try to give every person in the world a chance to fulfill his or her God-given potential. And we will do it all in the name of a country that believes so strongly in uh, the value of each individual. And that is really at the core of what makes this program successful, because it relies on volunteer help.